This is Scott the Fix-It Guy. Our goal with our videos is to empower you to be able to do the repairs on your own and save a whole lot of money and also get that great feeling of having fixed it by yourself. Today we have a Whirlpool washing machine. This is the model number and this is a stacked version and the motor keeps cutting out during the spin cycle. It works for a while and then it shuts itself off. We're going to take a look we got it unplugged. We're going to take out these two Phillips head screws to open this panel. And then we're going to reach back and there's two little bolts that we have to get out. We're going to use an angle tool to get to this little bolt because it's, it's hard to get to. You can, if you get behind the uh, dryer, it's actually pretty easy. But if you do it from the front, you need this little angle tool to get to it or a ratchet. So then there's another one over here. So it's in each corner of the of the uh, back of the front of the top panel. So once we get those screws out, we're going to slide the top panel toward us by just about an inch, so that the forward uh, pieces release, allowing the top panel to hinge up. There's a little little bolt that came out. So we're going to pull it toward us a little bit and then hinge it up and we're going to disconnect this modular connector for the lid switch. We're going to pinch in and pull down. Now we can lift the whole uh, upper panel up and out of the way. Now we're going to remove two bolts here that are holding on the front panel at the top. One on the left, one on the right. And then we'll go ahead and grab the panel, lift up, and that's going to release the little forks at the bottom. Get the front panel out of there. And I'm going to check to see if there might be something caught between the tub and the spin basket. So I'm going to push down on the balance ring and I'm going to disconnect. I think there's maybe eight of these little connectors all, there, all the way around the perimeter. I'm going to just disconnect all of them, push down and pull them away so that they disconnect. And then I'm going to lift the balance ring off so I can look in there and see if there might be an article of clothing that's caught or a little towel that would create so much friction that during high speed spin the motor would overheat and it would shut itself off. The customer said that it works for a while then it shuts off and if you let it cool down it'll work again. So I'm looking in the perimeter there between the metal spin basket and the plastic tub all the way around can't see anything. Also when you turn it you turn the spin basket, you may hear a rubbing sound. I didn't hear any rubbing sound, but I just want to look in there and just rule that out. If that is not the case and it's still cutting out, it just means that the motor is getting old and it's time to replace it. And they're pretty cheap and pretty easy to replace. I noticed when I bent down close to the motor, it had a burnt smell to it. that We call it ozone. You could smell um, that it had been just either overused or just a sign of its old age. So we're going to push the balance ring back down and connect all of the pieces all the way around. Make sure you get each one of them because this is part of the watertight system during high speed spin. If you don't get one, you may end up with a leak. So make sure they're all connected. Here's the motor. I've got it unplugged. I'm going to pull this modular connector out. I'm going to pry down on this clip. And this upper clip holding on the water pump, pull the water pump away. And then I have a couple little screws I got to get out. So I use my quarter inch driver and a little angle tool. The DeWalt angle tool has been really great because it gets into these tight areas. This motor comes off really easily, but the space you're working is pretty small. So I'm going to go ahead and zip out the screw at the top and then zip out one at the bottom. And then I can release these two spring clips that are holding on the motor. So they're um, connected between the uh, motor bracket and the motor itself. But first you got to get the screws out. There's just two, one at the top, one at the bottom. There's that one, quarter inch screw. One at the bottom. And then I'll take a standard head screwdriver and I'm going to pry the spring clip off the top and that'll release the top one and the bottom one will come off too. 
There we go. So that one came off, also the bottom one came off. So now I'll get that spring clip out of there so it's not in the way. I'm going to twist it, and pull it out of the motor mount in the back. And now I can lift up. I'm going to, these are kind of heavy, maybe 10, 15 pounds. I'm going to lift up underneath and I'm going to kind of wiggle it out of its tight space there. That's the motor. And it does smell burnt. So we've got a new one with me. I'm going to pull off this rubber piece that comes off of the motor coupler. I'm going to put it on the plastic forks that are hooked to the transmission. I'm going to wiggle it in until it lines up. There we go. And I have one fork at 12 o'clock and one at um, 4 and one at 8. I'm going to put the little rubber mount back on the motor mount. There should be four of them. A couple of them were stuck to the to the old motor. So now we've got four of them in position. These are almost like shock absorbers between the motor and the transmission plate. I'm going to pull off the old plastic fork. Make sure that I have the uh, new motor lined up the same as the old motor. And I'm going to put the plastic fork on the back shaft of the new motor and I'm going to kind of wiggle it on and get it to where it's it's flat and flush with the end of the motor shaft. Nice and flush. It looks good. Take off this dust plate <clears throat> from the bottom of the old motor. Put it on the bottom of the new motor. It just slides in. These are really good washing machines. They last a long time. Really, really great design. They call it the direct drive design. So I'm going to get the motor in position. i got to get the little plastic forks to line up so they can go into that rubber piece that we saw earlier. <clears throat> and the metal pins, there's four of them, have to fit into those rubber bushings on the transmission plate. This is the kind of the hard part. Take your time. <clears throat> we get it in nice and flush. We're going to push down really hard on this <clears throat> upper spot spring clip as we push the motor up a little bit higher than level to help out and that will lock in. Yeah, there's that locked in good. I'm going to reach underneath <coughs> and push up on the bottom clip until it locks in too. You have to use a fair amount of force to get those things to click in. There we go. And then we're going to add those two little screws that help to hold the spring clip into position. One at the top and one at the bottom. Quarter inch. I would say one thing that makes these motors burn out prematurely would be uh, washing blankets and bathroom mats. So I'm going to put the water pump back on. I'm going to reach underneath where the uh, motor coupler was and I'm going to spin it. <clears throat> we can see the shaft spinning. That's so the shaft can line up better with the opening on the water pump. I keep turning it until it feels like it fits in. And I'm going to put in the metal clips that hold on the water pump. <clears throat> One at the bottom and one at the top and I put them in on the vertical plane first and then twist them to the horizontal plane and then I'm going to push up underneath until it clicks into position. These ones don't use screws they just are only using spring tension. There's the bottom one, top one same thing twist in from vertical to horizontal and then push it down over the top and now we put in the uh, motor power connector make sure it's fully seated we're pretty much done at this point we just have to reassemble the cabinet 
So I'm going to put these forks here on both sides. They're going to fit into holes on the bottom part of the front panel. So I'm going to line those up and I lift the front panel a little higher than it should be and let it drop down under those forks at the bottom. This is kind of a difficult part. Just take your time. It's trying to line it up. You can swear and curse a few times to help you out. And then we're going to put in those screws to hold in the top <coughs> of the front panel. We did a uh, test when we were all done with this. We loaded up <coughs> the um, washer with a lot of clothing and towels, full load, and then we tested it at spin, and it did great. So it really, we just needed a new motor. <coughs> Here comes the top panel. Put it in position. And then we're gonna connect the uh, lid switch modular connector. Make sure it fully seats in and clicks. There we go. And we have to slide it in so it catches on these little plastic pieces. Looks great. So now we have to add in those two screws in the back. <clears throat> this is kind of done by feel because we can't really see back there. So I'm going to put one finger down to feel the hole and then guide the screw into the hole and then just use finger tension to get it tight. And I'll go ahead and tighten it with the angle tool. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. Oftentimes on this model, I find it difficult to get both of these lined up. Ideally, you want both screws back in. If it's taking you too long to do and you just can't line it up, <coughs> you can get behind it. <coughs> now we're going to go ahead and put that panel back in. We'll add the two Phillips head screws to hold it. Set it for spin, and give it a test. I found too that I wanted to remove a little bit of this rubber stopper on the lid, about half of it. It's there to help to have a nice uh, soft cushion between the lid and the <coughs> cabinet but sometimes you don't get a good lid lock connection and the lid lock does not let it spin so by removing a little bit of that rubber on both of these stoppers in the front the lids able to go a little lower and it's able to activate the lid lock more positively and <coughs> you're more likely to get a nice spin every time One way you can test if this is trouble, if it won't spin, but then you push down with your body weight on the lid and it does spin, that means you just have to remove a little bit of this rubber. There we go. Put it on spin and it did great. So hopefully this will help you out a lot too. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks so much for watching our video. We really appreciate your support. And when you get a chance, please press the subscribe button below so you can be subscribed and also the notification bell so we can send you more videos about appliance repair. Please also give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. If you really liked the video and it really helped you, please press this new applaud button and you can show your support and also get a nice clapping hands for your video. Thanks again.